I got one minute left. There's still a lot of stuff I want to talk about, man, all this policy. Um, one thing I want to read, this is uh, a memo uh, to commanders of MedCom, regional medical commands, and the subject is military treatment management of reported alleged sexual assault cases, payment for exams and kits. SAD kits, SAD kits, which are rape kits, are not included in TRICARE coverage. The Assistant Secretary of Defense is soliciting legislative changes to TRICARE benefit, which will include these kits within covered TRICARE supplies. Until that occurs, beneficiary, beneficiaries may be liable for bills for these supplies. Some states may have victim assistance compensation program, which will pay for certain accommodations for victims of sexual assaults, including SAD kids. That's how the military takes care of rape victims. 74 to 85 percent of soldiers convicted of rape or sexual assault leave the military with an honorable discharge, meaning rape conviction does not appear in their records anywhere. Only two to three percent of soldiers accused of rape are ever court-martialed and only five to six percent of soldiers accused of domestic abuse are ever court-martialed. In fact, several multiple homicides have recently taken place on military bases that have not even been criminally prosecuted. The Department of Defense's definition of morale booster for male soldiers, female soldiers. Take as needed, disposed when finished, and continue serving with honor. Please remember that many suffer in silent shame and never forget what's going on. We are often asked how we get started with Stop Military Rape, Military Rape Crisis Center. I am a veteran of the United States Coast Guard and a survivor of military sexual trauma. I was raped in May of 2006 by a fellow shipmate. I followed all the necessary steps, including report, reporting the assault and providing evidence, a confession letter written by my rapist. In August of 2006, I was informed that I'll be discharged. According to the Coast Guard Academy psychologist, surviving rape makes deployment, uh, makes one in ineligible for worldwide deployment, and as a result, I can no longer serve in the Coast Guard. What follows was a nine-month battle with, between the Coast Guard and myself while I tried to keep my job and change the Coast Guard's unofficial policy that rape survivors should be allowed to serve in the Coast Guard. I was a female in my early 20s, brand new to the Coast Guard. I admit it, I did not know every Coast Guard policy or tried to know something beyond my E3 rank. All I know is that what was happening to me was not, was just not right. I felt powerless. I didn't know how to fight the military. I was taught how to fight with them, for them, but how can I fight for my rights to stay with them? Out of the need to vent and needing an outlet to express the horror I was experiencing as a result of being raped, I started an on-log blog on MySpace. I was not expecting much of it. I just wanted to let out all the pain in me and share with the public. I almost immediately started receiving emails from active duty military members and veterans alike, each wanting to share their story. Everybody's story was so different, yet so similar. I received one email from an 18-year-old female who was raped two hours prior by a member of her command and was scared and had no one else to turn to. I received an email from a Coast Guard veteran who was raped 10 plus years ago while serving, and I was the first person he ever told. I started doing research online about military rape. I learned about tail hook, and read the brave story of Army Specialist Suzanne Swift. What was happening to me in the Coast Guard was very common and had been going on for a long time. I knew that I was in for the biggest battle of my life. I could not abandon my fellow men and women in uniform. Something's got to change. Stop Military Rape and the Military Rape Crisis Center was formed. We are the nation's largest support group for the survivors of military sexual trauma. In 2007, we assisted over 12,000 men and women of military sexual trauma and their families. We are starting to work with Congress to change the military policy of sexual assault. 
Every man and woman that volunteer to serve their country should have the right to serve without the fear of being sexually assaulted, harassed, and or raped. In addition, no one should be reprimanded or punished for reporting a crime that was done to them. May 30th is International Stop Military Rape Awareness Day. Write to your representatives, contact the media, do what we're doing now, and let them know that military rape is something we just can't stand for. 